Dodging and burning is one of the most important things you should understand as a photographer who edits their images because this is the way that you lighten or darken specific spots on your image. Now, these aren't global adjustments applied to the whole photo. Instead, they are local adjustments which are applied to specific spots in your photos. In this week's video, I want to show you how I go about dodging and burning in Lightroom, uh, specifically Lightroom Classic, uh, but this will work exactly the same in regular Lightroom. Uh, and then I'm also going to show you how I use color to dodge and burn as well. This is typically something that people do in Photoshop, but you can actually do it in Lightroom as well. So I'm going to show you guys that in today's video. I've got two examples. Let's jump right in there. First things first, we are here in Lightroom. We've got this image. Now the problem that we have with this particular image, I like the colors in the warmth, like the sunlight here, and I like the colors on the tree. I don't like the colors in the shade here, which are kind of um, magenta toned. I want them to be like kind of warm. I want it to look like this whole rock is orange, but this is just orange that's in the shadows. Now to counteract the magenta tone here, you can go into the tint and slide it towards green, but you'll notice it starts to make things look pretty nasty. Uh, so that's not really a great way to do it. Now other people might go into the point color, select a color here, and they might try and adjust the color here. But as you can see, it gives me some weird banding going on uh, and I can't adjust it as far as I need to. So that's not going to work either. So let me show you how I can change the color of this using dodging and burning. And then I'll show you um, a few kind of brightening, darkening tricks. And we're going to be doing some on a sunset uh, or sunrise image as well. So uh, what you're going to do is go to your masking tools up here. This is going to be how you're going to go about dodging and burning. Now you can use any kind of selection that you want most of the time to dodge and burn. You're going to want to use the brush, but you can certainly use some of the other options. So on this photo, we're just going to use the brush and then let's just paint over here. Now, if once this black and white pops up, it's kind of annoying to paint. So I like to uncheck show overlay and then I'll just keep painting here. Now, my brush settings, I've got the feather relatively high. Um, you can actually probably increase that all the way and then you can adjust the flow and density as you see fit. Usually I leave them both at 100 and then I adjust the size uh, as needed. But you'll just hit that all around. You can double check there, make sure you've gotten everything you need. Uh, and now you can go in and make adjustments. So this little tool here, color, is something that a lot of people aren't using, but you definitely should give it a try. Um, you can use this color to adjust the colors in your image. So basically dodging and burning, but with color. Uh, this is something you could do in Photoshop. There's a few different ways to do it, but uh, if you want to stay in Lightroom here, uh, this is probably the best way to adjust the colors in your image freely. So again, remember, I want to make this a little bit more orange. Now, as I slide up, it gets more saturated. Down is less saturated. Um, you have to have the saturation up just a little bit to have it do any effect because uh, selecting white as the color doesn't do anything. Um, so you will get this to a spot where you feel like it looks relatively realistic. If you want to adjust the saturation, uh, this just makes the color go up and down, but it doesn't adjust the hue of the color, which is probably good in this instance, maybe somewhere about in there. Toggle before and after. You can see we warm that up nicely. Now you can go in here with the brush and you can erase, like if you're finding um, like up here, I don't need this to be in my selection. I do want this to be maybe a little bit higher feather and we'll increase the flow all the way. Just paint out some of these spots that are already warm because we don't need them to be any warmer. We'll probably paint this out as well. Paint that out, you know, just like that. So our selection is now going to be looking something like that. Toggle before and after. Now you can go in and of course, uh, keep adjusting this color. If you're finding maybe you want it to be more saturated. Uh, get it to just exactly where you want, just like that. Now, you could do the same thing down here in the trees if you wanted to adjust the color and do a little bit more dodging and burning. Uh, but this time, you could do something like, say, a color range selection. Now, if you don't know how to use all these different masking tools, I've got a video on that. I'll link here. You should check that out. Um, but if you do know how to use them, you just continue watching this video. So I selected the tree. Now you can see I'm getting a good selection of the greens down there. Now I can go in um, and I can change the color or I can even increase or decrease the exposure, the highlights or the whites. This is gonna help to make those bright leaves kind of pop a little bit. Um, so this is kind of a way that you can dodge and burn without having to use the brush when you wanna make a really fine selection there. After I do all that, I can grab the color and then of course adjust this to whatever color seems uh, just right for my image. You know, something in there might look good 
Um, so we can toggle this before and after. So just a quick little pop there to kind of make this image um, a little bit more neutralized in the colors almost. Now let's look at how you can maybe add light to the photo because I know that's going to be something that's really important. I've already added two masks to this photo, but all I did was create a little vignette there. Um, and I'll show you how to kind of make these clouds pop. And then I'm going to show you how to add a little bit of glow um, with some color around where the sunlight is coming from here. First thing that you want to do, uh, let's create that glow like where the sun is coming from. So let's create a new mask. We'll select radial gradient. I'm going to hit command minus a few times to zoom out. Then I'm going to click and drag the circle from somewhere over here because this is the direction that the light is coming from. And I might angle this slightly just like that. You can uncheck show overlay if you want to have a little bit more uh, visual control, I guess, over the image. Um, let's just start with it about right there. Now we are going to increase the feather all the way to 100 as well to make it a little bit softer. Then we can go in and start making some adjustments. Now, one thing you'll notice as I like increase the exposure and I maybe add a little bit of warmth in there and maybe I like to drop the dehaze just a little bit and maybe we'll go back up and pop the whites. So I'm making a few changes here, but the problem that I'm having is it's bleeding over into the foreground. So we can go in here and subtract, and then we're going to select sky. Now that might sound like exactly the opposite of what we want to do to uh, subtract the sky, but we can invert this right there. Now we are uh, not, we're not adding the sky, but we're subtracting the inverse of the sky. That's really hard to explain and make it make sense, but just trust me, follow along. It'll provide you the results that you want, I think. Um, and so now we're looking a lot better there. We've created that little bit of glow. Uh, if we're finding that maybe we're losing some saturation in there, we can add our saturation back. Uh, you know, you can drop the exposure, maybe drop the highlights just to kind of help that color to pop in there. You can increase, you know, adjust the colors as you see fit. Just add that glow in real nicely and make as many adjustments as you need there. This dehaze is really nice to add a little bit of light. So I like using the dehaze as well. Let's zoom back in here. You can see before and after. Really nice way to add some color there. Now there's many other ways that you can dodge and burn even using color as well. So let's create a new mask. This time let's do um, luminance range. And I just wanna select maybe the brighter spots in the clouds. So something like, you know, maybe right here is a good selection. And I'm gonna go up here and adjust the luminance range. I'm gonna drop this down as much as possible. And I just wanna make a good selection of kind of the brightest spots in the clouds. And I might even adjust this as well. Bring that in because uh, we don't want that super bright area, but we do want to get a good selection of everything else. Something like that. You can adjust this as you see fit for each photo, but somewhere in there. Now I can go in here. I can add some color. I'm going to uncheck show overlay so we can see this as it happens. Now, as I adjust the colors here, you'll see that we can add a lot of color to this sunset or sunrise. Now, you obviously don't want to overdo it too much. Uh, you want this to just kind of be subtle, maybe somewhere in there. Just warm those clouds up a touch, and maybe we'll pop. Uh, you can't do too much here, or it does get kind of a little out of hand, but we can pop those whites just a little bit in there, and then we can, you know, if you want to feather this out a little bit, you totally can. But what you can see we added a little bit of warmth there to our clouds. And then last but not least, I would probably go in here just with a brush. This is just the most simple way to dodge and burn. And we'll increase the exposure before we do this just so we can see it happen. But let's say we wanted to go in here and brighten the front side of this rock. Maybe we want to brighten the side of this rock as well. Um, maybe we want to brighten this. You know, you can go in here, make as many adjustments as you need. And then we'll drop this just so it doesn't quite scream at you quite so much. And then... Uh, we can also go in here, subtract, and we can subtract the sky. That's going to make it so that we don't have any bleed over in our photo. Make as many adjustments as you need. You can, of course, use this color option here if you wanted to add a little bit of color into the foreground. It probably wouldn't make sense in this example, but this can be helpful if you have something that is very colorful in your foreground, like a flower, perhaps. Uh, and you can do the same thing going in here with a brush and then painting over 
always uncheck that show overlay so you can see if you wanted to kind of darken the side of this just to add a little bit of depth to your photos. Now you don't want to do too much darkening or lightening and you probably want to spend a little bit more time doing this just to make it look a little more realistic. But you can see how that kind of really shapes the foreground of my image because it gives us a little bit of light here, which is realistic because the light's coming from the right. Um, and then it's also realistic right here. Now the last thing that I like to do to the sky here is maybe just one more big radial gradient. We're going to do the same thing, subtract, select sky, and then we're going to invert. And then we'll just go in here one more time with our color and we can just kick a little bit more color into the sky. This is a great way to make your sunsets and sunrises pop a little bit more, just like that. We can maybe add a little bit more contrast in there. Um, so super simple, super easy way. This color tool is really effective if used correctly. You can see we've warmed that up and we haven't really made these blues any weaker. So it does still look pretty realistic in my opinion, but you can see in just a few minutes, we went from this to this on our photo. So super easy to use. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me know down below if you have any questions. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, my name is Austin James Jackson. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel. I want to continue to release videos that help you become a better photographer, I'm releasing one long form video every week and a short form video every other day. So make sure to subscribe so that you are seeing that in your inbox. It also helps me for you to leave a like and a comment. Um, let me know if you like this video, if you have any questions, anything like that, I'd love to help you guys out. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I'm Austin Jackson. We'll see you guys next time.